Matt here. Today I'm going to play you B3 from the Grade 1 syllabus, 2017-18. This is called Dan's La Forêt Luan Sam. It's a really cool piece. It's about a cuckoo in the forest. So for a difficulty rating, I would give this piece about a 7 out of 10. It is tricky in places. There's a lot of dynamics, particularly you often have your right hand doing forte and your left hand doing piano or the left hand doing forte and the right hand doing piano. It's a bit like packing your head, rubbing your tummy. The, the right hand does change quite a bit in the course of this piece, its position, and I'm going to explain to you why that is, and if you don't like it, what you can do instead later on. But uh, anyway, enough of me talking for now. Let's give the piece a go. Okay. Try not to play too much slower than this. Okay, so there's not a huge amount to say about this piece in regards to the fingering. Um, what I will say was what I was talking about earlier, is that the right hand, um, they have you move around from this position to this position, and that could be a little bit of trouble for some people playing this piece. So the reason that they do this is because sometimes the right hand is marked a forte and the left hand is marked piano, like this. Sometimes it's the other way around, that the left hand is forte and the right hand is piano. Uh, so if you look at my hand, some of the fingers are bigger than others, aren't they? This is particularly big. Thumb is a nice fat finger. This one's useless, can't do anything. Um, so what people often tend to do is they'll get something, they'll get passages in their stronger fingers, like these ones. Um, because we want to play piano, the editor has decided that they're going to use these two fingers to play the piano passages. That's their suggestion, and um, that can work. Or you can just play the little finger a bit more oomph. So anyway, that's the thinking behind why they're moving the right hand back and forward, is so that the piano passages use the weaker fingers, and the forte passages use the louder fingers. I mean, stronger fingers. <laughs> okay, so if you don't like moving around, here's some options. So if I go for ROM, bar 5, this is my right hand. My right hand does this, and piano... And the rhythm fingering we do this, move up here. And then, uh, and of course, we're going to go back to the little finger here. So, for some people, it might be a bit difficult to remember which finger you're using when, whether you're using five or or the third finger. Um, I, in fact, when I performed it uh, earlier in the video, you'll see that I actually messed up the fingering at one point. I did a five when I should have been done a, doing a three. Um, so, what I would suggest is that you pick one and stick with it. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to stick with a fifth finger. And let me show you how that's going to work. Okay, so first thing, I want, by the time I get to bar eight, I want to have my finger ready to have a five. So really it's up to you, you can change at any point before then. Once, once with this thumb has left behind at bar five, you don't really need it anymore. So it's up to you, you can change any point after that into a new position, so you could do this. And be ready for the five there. 
or you could go something like that for instance or even just the last minute you could go and all of those are fine just as long as you get your hand back into this position ready for the um, the CA. So what we're trying to do here is every time we have the C A, just use the little finger. And of course, to play forte, you just have to hit it a bit, hit it harder. Instead of that. So once you've set up your hand for the 5 free position, you can pretty much stay here until the end of bar 16, where you have this. So at this point you have to move down to a C and an A. And we have this. Uh, and chords there. Now you might be saying to yourself, why don't we just do this? 5-1, 5-1, and then fight by maybe one, one again. And something like that. And you can do that. You can have at it, that's absolutely fine. Uh, their fingering is better. You've got to remember that these fingerings are designed by people who are way, way past grade one. And they're doing the best fingerings for a very advanced pianist. So this is actually a lot better than what they've got there. Because what we have there is we have um, this note to this note. And what this fingering enables you to do is play it more legato. Whereas if I have to go thumb thumb, I have to jump up, and no matter how good I am, there's always a little bit of a gap there, as opposed to this. The A, there's no way you're going to be able to play that without a gap, because the A has to come up and down. So that's a lost cause, but this one you can make legato. That's their thinking behind the fingering. And then we've got this. So the written fingering will be like this, 5, 1, 2, and then you go underneath with your thumb, like one of your scales, and you play thumb and 4, this one here. I would make a little exercise out of it, I would just do this over and over again. With the correct fingering, make sure you're not doing something like this, you've got to be doing it, so 5 on B flat. Two on the E and one and four, those ones, on the F and the A. So if you prefer sticking with the five and the three, like we talked about earlier, um, at bar 24, you can just stay where you are and finish off like that. There's no reason to move. Um, so again, just to recap, the advantage of just using these is that it's just easy to remember. You can say, whenever I play C, A, I'm going to be using my little finger and my third finger on the A. Uh, it's not as clever as the written fingering, but it is easier to remember. Right at the opening, this is just something to be aware of. Um, you play middle C with the right hand first. And then straight away, the left hand plays the same note on the next. What you might get sometimes is this, where the C doesn't play again. So you've got to give you've got to give that C the time to come up and come down again. staccatos as short as you can. They always sound better. For instance, this sounds way better than it just sounds better, doesn't it? Uh, the little I thing in the very last bar is we've, se we've seen this in a previous video, but this is called a fermata, which means you just pause. So you play the last note a bit longer. We go to There's no writ written at the very end. There's nothing that says to slow down, but if you did decide that you wanted to slow down the last two bars, 
I'm sure the examiner would not mind at all if you went. So if I went, if I go from the last four bars. to just going straight through which is I personally think the writ sounds a little bit more interesting uh, the word marcato at the beginning just means marked or emphasized that doesn't mean you're gonna play the whole thing like this accented that's absolutely horrible don't do not do that they'll hate you um, what they're getting at basically, I think, I'm always, this is always just my thoughts, right, I could be wrong, but because this is a song, we've got words to this, they've written up the, a few of them at the bottom, we've got, um, it does love for it, one time, or whatever, whatever the words are, basically what you've got to remember is each of the quavers, when it's sung, has words to it, so it's not going to be super legato, it's not going to be... <laughs> gap between the notes, just a tiny bit, not a huge amount, not that staccato, isn't it? So what we want is this. Good. If that goes over your head, don't worry, this really is just polishing on the cake. Like once you get once you get the piece really, really good, then you can start thinking about marcato. Um, if you're not at that stage where all the notes are perfect, I wouldn't bother yet. Talk to your teacher. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please do give the video a thumbs up. It helps this channel a lot. And there's a subscribe button. If you want to see more videos like this, please do click that and subscribe to this channel. That will help update you on um, what I'm doing. And if you would like to see some other videos, there's a few up here. There we go. If you've got any tips or tricks of your own for this piece, please do put them in the comments down below and maybe you can help someone else with their piano playing. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.